when I have the pleasure of talking to Jean Bruce Scott, uh, who played the lovely Jovina Bruce in the Knight Rider first season episode, A Nice Indecent Little Town. Jean Bruce Scott is probably most well known for her role as Caitlin O'Shaughnessy in the hit show Airwolf, um, where she played um, uh, the character of uh, Caitlin O'Shaughnessy for 44 episodes. Uh, but besides that, she's also been on shows like St. Elsewhere, Days of Our Lives, Magnum, and Paul Charles. This conversation, um, as usual, I have a lot of questions, um, but uh, hopefully it will develop into kind of a Gene Bruce Scott commentary of this uh, episode, because while we talk, we will have the, the whole episode uh, running uh, on the TV screen in the back here. And hopefully that will bring back a lot of good memories for Jean Bruce Scott. So I hope you all enjoy this conversation. Welcome to this conversation. And uh, with me now, I not only have Jean Bruce Scott, I also have Jackie. And uh, Jean, I think you should maybe explain why Jackie is also here because she's an integral part uh, of this uh, of this conversation taking place. Thank you, I would really like to do that. Um, welcome to my home, welcome to Jackie's home, uh, and I guess welcome to Jacob's home too. I, I don't know if you're at work or you're at home. Um, I wanted to uh, introduce Jackie uh, to all of your friends and fans um, because Jackie and I have become great friends um, through a show that I did called Airwolf um, and their Facebook page. And we became friends on that page because we were both talking about the show. And Jackie reached out to me and said, um, could she put together a Facebook page for me that would archive all of the different shows that I did because she realized that I did a lot of different shows. And so um, we started talking uh, off the Airwolf site and then Jackie, take it from there. Then I just sent you a message and suggested we have a go at this page and you decided it'd be great if we did it between us, which is fantastic. And um, we Zoomed once and then we haven't stopped since. And um, we have a great deal of fun with it. And, um, you know, it, it's great and everyone seems to be enjoying it. And yeah, it's just going from strength to strength. So all good. Well, Jackie is very humble. Um, she started out when she, when she contacted me, she, uh, sent me a couple of things and said, well, it would be something like this. And what do you think? And she's very clever and she knows how to, uh, manipulate pictures and, and, uh, uh, make videos and GIFs, GIFs yeah. <laughs> and GIFs. memes and all of those wonderful things. And she also knows how to tell a story. I mean, I think, uh, one of the things that we have the most fun with, we talk every week, usually a couple of hours, and we tell each other stories for about an hour of that time. And then she'll say, oh, well, we're going to post something. What are we posting this week? <laughs> and she's got lots of ideas, and she always has a uh, hundred things in the hopper that she can throw up on the screen and say, well, what about this? Well, what about this? And so... Um, I think we've just been having fun telling stories, uh, mostly. Um, I have a little bit of trouble with my memory, and so uh, Jackie has been so helpful, um, helping me remember my time in Hollywood and, and what I did. Um, and she's also given me a lot of confidence. Um, in the past, uh, I, I wasn't as comfortable um, being on camera and, and, and thinking about Hollywood and Hollywood days because I had moved on and moved into the theater and I was a producer and I, I was doing other things. Um, but Jackie um, told me stories about herself, her own life. She became a police officer, um, <laughs> when, she officer was, yeah. <laughs> when she was a young girl. And then we discovered that so many women on the Airwolf page uh, and on the Magnum page 
um, had come to the show as young, young girls, little girls, and then saw Maggie or Caitlin, or in, in the instance of what we're going to go into with Chobina, um, saw strong female characters and decided in themselves, I can do that. I can do that. I can go out there and I can do that. Is that right, Jackie? Am I? Yeah, absolutely. And and still do. You know, it's I think the characters still resonate today. Yeah. And they still they still give confidence to people. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So it's, it's a, and, it's a, and the fact that we both, you know, kind of uh, I've always been a ginger or a redhead <laughs> or whatever. Um, she's got a little bit of auburn tint in there when she's out in the sun. And I see it when she when I see her uh, her bicycle pictures. Um, but we're both kind of freckle face, fair uh, girls. Uh, not ne not necessarily your um, femme fatales or your Charlie's Angels or or whatever. But you know what? We get the job done, yeah. don't we, Jackie? We certainly do. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. Yep, a hundred percent. And and we have fun doing it. We we have a lot of fun. I I don't think that there's lately, particularly for me, you've given me so much confidence. Um, I don't think that there's much that I think that I can't do. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and and Jacob, uh, your reaching out to me was a lovely surprise. Um, you reached out on on Facebook uh, on the on the archive, and uh, you had a plan in mind, and you were very clear about what you wanted to do and how much time it was going to take. And um, I guess what what uh, Jackie and I have talked about too is that. You know, um, uh, Jacob, we've talked about it a little bit as well, but people who leave Hollywood and, and the movies, um, they go on and they have other lives. Yeah. And uh, that's, they, they, that's, that's a part of their life that they, they remember and they value, but they're on to these other things. Yeah. Um, unless, like me, they're having memory problems, um, they may not want to go back and, and you know, relive uh, those quote-unquote glory days. Um, but this has been, this has been uh, a gift. Um, meeting Jackie, becoming friends with Jackie, now becoming friends with you, Jacob. This is, the, this is a gift. And um, I am greatly appreciative of it. So, um, and no, I, Jackie, I, I, can, I, I can say I, likewise. I cannot say enough wonderful things about Jackie and her imagination and her talent and her ability to tell stories. She's a wonderful storyteller. She's a wonderful writer. Um, I have a script idea for her that I, I keep trying to pitch her, um, this for her to, to write. It's not for me. It's just, it's just her, her life um, uh, has, has given me some ideas about what, what, what next should be on television in England. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would also say that that uh, it, I think it's impressive seeing uh, the the direct impact Hollywood and a show like Airwolf uh, can have on on the real life of uh, mm -hmm. of, of people. Um, and of course, I would also say to all the Night Rider fans watching this, take a look at the Gene Bruce Scott archive. I've, I'm very sure that you'll be entertained in there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, we, we have fun there and all, all are welcome. So come and say hello and uh, ask me a question. Ask Jackie knows so much about my career. Ask Jackie a question. She knows backwards and forwards. So, so, so when there were those words, we're going to say bye bye to you, Jackie. And uh, Gina okay. and I are going to uh, continue the conversation for ourselves. Okay. okay. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Jackie. Okay. Bye. Bye. Everything is all right now, and um, we've got the episode running. Um, a nice, indecent little town, and welcome back, uh, Jean Bruce Scott. I've looked so much forward to, to this uh, conversation with you. Um, while we have um, the, the start of the episode, um, um, can you tell us a bit about how you got the role as Jubina Bruce? Yes, um, I'm trying to think uh, year year wise. Um, I had left the soap opera, and I think I was doing Magnum PI, and I was auditioning for quite a few other things as well because I was 
I wasn't uh, a regular on Magnum. I was what was called a recurring guest star. And so they had me in, in what was also called at the time first position, uh, which meant if they needed me, they booked me, they got me first. Um, and then sometimes, uh, depending on what the shows were, they could work out uh, shooting schedules or where I needed to be. Um, this show, uh, Knight Rider, I think was a universal show. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty yeah, sure it was yeah, Universal yeah, was, Studios. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was already working with and for Universal, although this was on NBC and I think I was on CBS. Yeah. Um, so the networks might, you know, everybody had to get involved. But so either the networks could agree or disagree, the studios could agree or disagree, and then the shows and their production companies had to agree or disagree. On this particular one, um, I'm pretty sure that I went onto the lot to audition uh, for Gil and maybe uh, Joe Rogson. Was he one of the producers? Yeah, I, mean, I think I worked with him on something yeah, else yeah. as well. Um, but there were a couple of producers. Um, I don't think Glenn was there for my audition. I had auditioned for Glenn before for a number okay. of other okay. things. Uh, Glenn was actually, uh, he had left Knight Rider uh, at this point. He, he was only in charge for the first, I think, uh, 13 episodes or so. Um, and then, then, then he left it to, to others. So. Uh, that explains where I can't get him in the room in my yeah, head. Yeah. Um, but I, I knew Glenn only only because I had auditioned for him for quite a few other things, um, uh, pilots and and uh, other other shows that he had on the air. I have a gardener outside my window. Okay. It's no problem. It's it's, it's not it's not, it's not uh, disturbing our conversation here. So uh, it's not supposed to be here today. Okay. Um, should we start over again? Should I go? Tell him to go away. No, 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 no. I don't think so. If if it's not if it's not bothering you, it's I think it's perfectly okay for for, for the for, for, for the for our conversation. Okay, he's gonna mow and blow. Yeah. <laughs> if, 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 if you can if you can handle it, so uh, it's it, it's it's not disturbing the sound here. Okay. Well, so then what I will say is welcome to my home. Um, yeah. I live down in San Diego now. I'm no longer in Hollywood. Um, and um, my husband is a university professor down here, and so that's that's how we settled down here. Um, and so you are uh, you are in my hallway right now. You may see a pussy cat. You may see a puppy dog uh, wandering around in the background. You will definitely hear a gardener, and there's construction happening next door. So We've with got all a lot of that things mind, going on, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is real life. This is about as real as it's going to get. Um, so you were asking about the audition. Um, I auditioned quite a bit over there at Universal uh, for a number of, of, of different shows. This particular show, um, I looked, I think, on IMDb, I think this was April Webster, uh, was the casting director. Okay, yeah. And I also I auditioned a lot for April. She brought me in. If, if she had a Jobina kind of role, she brought me in on it. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I was very fortunate um, to have some casting directors and producers uh, who were looking for me. Yeah. Um, so I would have gone in, I would have uh, had to uh, drive to the lot early um, to get a script. I don't think they, they didn't send scripts out for auditions in those days. Um, and so I would have gotten the script ahead of time by, some, by going in early, reading the whole script before my audition, yeah. uh, doing my, uh, the, the way I mark up my script, marking up my script for the audition, and then would have gone in script in hand and auditioned. Um, yeah. I do remember uh, being uh, happy and excited to meet Gil, uh, the director, um, because he was kind of an up and coming universal, he was a guy that they were looking really hard at um, yeah. as far as directing uh, was went on. And I yeah. think that he was making a bit of a name for himself in maybe in the action adventure uh, sort of uh, area. Yeah. Yeah. So I did, did that. Um, I probably got some direction from Gil, uh, which I tried to incorporate into my audition. Um, I'm, if, if Joel had anything to say, I probably incorporated that too. Yeah. And then uh, I left. 
And on that particular day, I may have had two or three other auditions, uh, either on the same lot or unfortunately sometimes an hour across town because Los Angeles is not a very friendly town for actors auditioning. Uh, you drive all over the place. Um, and that was, that was my day that day. Um, we didn't have cell phones. I don't know if this is interesting to your, to your folks. In we didn't have cell phones. Um, and at that time, we didn't even have message machines. We had message services. So you, you had a service yeah. that, that would take all your calls. And then you had a pager. And the pager would say, beep, 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 beep. You know, you're in, then you'd see the number that your agent called, your service called, uh, and, and then you'd, you'd get back to them. Yeah. So probably later in the day, um, or because also the turnaround on auditions uh, was usually a day or two. It wasn't like you audition now and two weeks later you shoot the show. It was, it was right away. Yeah. And so um, my agents would not have probably sent me out if I wasn't available. So then April would have called my agents. Um, they would have gotten the dates. Uh, then my agents would have called me and said, hey, Jeannie, they want to book you. Uh, what do you think? And I'd say, hey, uh, you know, I love Gil. I, I know Joel. Yes, let's do it. And um, so then uh, I would have been booked. Now they would have sent a script to my house. Now, because I'm under contract, um, uh, they would send the script. Um, I'd probably have a costume fitting or two before the actual shoot dates. Um, so they choose, they pick the outfits and, and do all the fittings and all of that. Um, and then usually because I'm the girl, they would have me as first call in the morning uh, because you have to get into makeup and all that. I do remember my first day of shooting and I, I, I found, actually found my script. So I do have that. Oh, I love it. That's, that's so cool. See that. Oh, you see that? Yeah. All you Knight Rider fans out there, it's awesome. Great script. Yes, yeah. So um, I do have, this is my the final script. Um, uh, I would have gone in, uh, it doesn't have a call sheet. And so I was going to ask you if you have, if, if anybody in your uh, universe yeah. has access to any I, of I, those I, old call sheets. Yeah, actually, I, I would, uh, I, I, I would uh, bet that, that uh, Joe Huth from Night Rider Historians has, uh, ha, can, can find a call sheet from, uh, from, from, uh, yeah, from a nice and decent little town. That's, that would be something I think your folks might be interested in, too, and just in terms of yeah, how a show is shot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so they set up the whole week. You get you get that sort of. Uh, that's not really the call sheet yet. It just tells you where the interiors and the exteriors and where they're filming, and it, it gives you a general idea of who's needed. Yeah. But your call sheet comes out the night before for the next day. Yeah. And so as you're working on the set, your assistant director is busy uh, with the production manager working very hard to put together this call sheet. And everything, every single detail that's needed for the next day has to be on that call sheet. Yeah. So actors, stunt people, crew, lighting, uh, set design, everybody that's, that's working is on that call sheet. And so um, I would have done my costume fitting. Then I would have gotten a call from my agent saying, your first day on the set is whatever day it was, it and filmed, your call I think time. It, it filmed from 25th of January to 2nd of February in 1983. Um, do you remember if, if you were there every day uh, of that week? That's, that's actually uh, a, a, usually an eight-day shoot, okay. seven, I think, well, I, that's I think it's seven, seven uh, maybe I'm wrong, I think usually it was a week, it was a week. A week. I think we shot a little bit, maybe a little bit longer in some okay. of the air work episodes. But um, yeah, I would not have been there every day. But I do remember the first day, whatever we were shooting, we were shooting on the lot at Universal. And I would have probably had my makeup done on their soundstage, yeah, yeah. Um, whichever stage 
they would call me to that stage. Yeah. So that's where I would show up, probably at 6.30 in the morning. Um, Patricia McPherson was in a group of friends, the same group that I was in. We were not like buddy friends, but we were always at barbecues and friends' houses. And so we, were, we knew each other. Yeah. And we also auditioned, you know, constantly all together. I mean, I was thrilled for her, you know, that she got the pilot and then that she was shooting Knight Rider. Yeah. So that was great. She would have been on the set. And they, I wanted to watch, I wanted to watch Edward shoot. That was who I really wanted to see because he was a big star and he was in my memory from Please Don't Eat the Daisies and wonderful movies. And he was just this, this wonderful, wonderful actor. Now, David, um, although I, David and I both were on soaps at the same time. So David Hasselhoff was on- The Young and the Restless. Was he on um, Young and Restless? Young and Restless. Restless. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he was on Young and Restless and I was on uh, Days of Our Lives. And so we also kind of overlapped in events and uh, galas and parties and whatever those things would be. Um, but we weren't, again, we weren't pals. But I, you know, I knew him to say, hello, David. And he knew me to probably say, hello, Jeannie. Um, but who I didn't know was Edward. And so that was, that was pretty exciting. And so I watched those scenes that they shot uh, in what was the, the trailer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was a very exciting morning for me. And then we went out and shot some of the other other uh, stuff that we were shooting on the lot. We There was actually quite a bit that we shot on the lot. Um, I think my sneaking around yeah. was on the lot. Yeah, we, 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 we will get to that in, in, oh, okay. in, in some minutes. I have a, I have a, a, a question uh, because uh, an ice in decent little town is the only episode um, of, of 84 Night Rider episodes uh, on which it says starring in alphabetic order. Can you can you remember any <laughs> were there conflicts between some of the actors that that that, 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 that might have have uh, um, yeah accelerated it, uh, something like that? It wouldn't have been a conflict. It would have been an agent, okay. um, and so. When you when you are being contracted for the show, um, they have SAG would have a base rate for what a guest star role would yeah. be paid. Yeah. And then depending on where you were and what your last quote was. Now a quote, so if I if the very first job I ever worked on I got fifteen hundred dollars. The next time I worked, my agents would say, We want a single card. That means your name only on the screen. Yeah. So a single yeah. card, yeah. top of the show, top of the line, and we want to you know, bump up her rate to $2,000. So these kinds of negotiations are going on all the time for all the different actors. Yeah, okay. um, I don't know that they do that anymore. Um, you know, the, now uh, Hollywood is so different than when I was there, but, but getting your quote bumped up, Getting that single card slot, yeah. uh, getting a slot at the front of the guest stars, yeah. or uh, sometimes, and this never made sense to me, but people would also like to be put at the end to say, with so-and-so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. So, so would you do all of the guest stars, um, and then and say, and with. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and it was like, why would you want to be the with card? I want to be. Yeah. I want to be <laughs> in the beginning. So well, anyway, yeah. um, that might have been going on. Uh, I, I, I didn't realize it was the only one. No, it, uh, it was. Yeah. 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 So, well, you know, you had some stars in the in the in the guest star yeah, role, yeah. Um, and uh, you know, there were also actors in in that show and others at Universal that were under contract to Universal. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. And so you'd see them in a number of different shows. Sometimes you'd see them in the same show in different episodes, right? Um, and they were, they, it's because they were under contract to, to Universal and Universal um, notoriously didn't pay their 
actors under contract a lot of money. Okay. But they paid you 52 weeks a year. Have you ever heard, have you heard this story before? No, 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 I haven't. No, I haven't. No, 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 no. no. So, so they would, they would all get paid, you know, uh, you'd go in and if the going rate for SAG-AFTRA was, uh, for a guest star role was 1500 Universal was maybe only paying their company of actors 600 a week, but it was for 52 weeks. Yeah, they, 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 they could they, put they, you in any kind of part. Yeah. Yeah. They could put you in a guest lead yeah. and give you that title card, but they weren't paying you what the other guest stars on the show were making. Okay. Okay. And so that's uh, all of all of those negotiations were happening. Yeah. And then I would imagine that there were uh, also j certainly during my tenure at Universal uh, working on those shows, there were people who didn't resign their contract yeah. 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 because they knew they could get better deals in the marketplace. Yeah. And then when Universal wanted to hire them, they asked for a lot. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what was going on. I, I, I did look at that cast list. So, um, yeah. Yeah. OK. Uh, in the back here, we've got uh, your first uh, screen appearance um, in, in this show. And actually, this is kind of an iconic place. Uh, it, it, it wasn't when, when this was, uh, was um, uh, being, being recorded in, in 83, but, but a few years later, it was, uh, yeah, it was uh, the courthouse square in Back to the Future. Uh, yes. In the Back to the Future movies. So, uh, yeah. And, and here, here you have a, 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 yeah, a conversation with, uh, with David Hasselhoff in the back here. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Um, um, w w when we get a bit further in, in, into, into this scene, we can see that it's not like there's a ton of people in, in that square, have you, have you any uh, any memories from 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 shooting this uh, this scene? How many people were yeah. there? Yeah, yeah. I think I think we, we can see it. It, it. It's it's portrayed as if it's uh, it's a lot of people, but but when when we see it, it's actually we, we can see if, if if one looks carefully, it's it's not that many people that that, that are assembled. Uh, yeah, they they kept the people moving, and so it wasn't unusual to see the same people behind shots. Um, probably 25, I would say. Yeah. 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 And that, uh, you know, um, that square in the eighties in particular, uh, was used on every show, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. We used that a lot, uh, also for Airwolf and yeah. So, so it, was, um, it, was, it was no big deal. Um, well, no, I mean, it would have been a big deal. Shooting on the lot was always kind of a big deal and fun. Yeah. And especially depending on, again, <laughs> where they let you park. Yeah. You know, um, some sometimes, you know, as I worked a little bit more and a little bit more, I, I got to drive on the lot and that was a big deal. Yeah. And I would have a parking spot somewhere within that, that universal compound. Yeah. Um, and they, they had lots that were off lo the, the lot. And then you'd have to walk in and you'd, you, there was a certain walk-in gate that you'd walk onto the lot. Yeah. And you know, of course, the reason that you want to drive onto the lot is, is because it's 80 or 90 degrees in California, yeah. even in sometimes in January. So trudging across that uh, universal back lot and through the sound stages and getting to the, wherever you were going to shoot, you know, it was sometimes a, quite a, quite a distance, yeah. but this is in the middle of the, of the back lot. And it's, it's a very pleasant place to shoot. They have all of these wonderful side streets. And so they pull up the motor homes and the honey wagons and the light trucks and all that kind of stuff. So it, 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 it keeps you all in one, one space. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you any uh, recollections of, of, of your um, of your uh, meeting with uh, you know Patricia, Edward, David? Um, uh, now we, we can see one of the scenes that that, that you talked about in, in the semi, um, uh, in in the back of the semi, and uh, yeah, with with Edward Mulher. Yeah, um, I do. I just do remember that um, he asked me who I was. I, I, I'm not sure who all was on the set that day, but he, uh, Edward asked me who I was. Yeah. And I just, I said, you know, oh my goodness, I'm, 
uh, I'm an actor and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be uh, playing one of the characters, you know, in this episode. And he said, oh, well, who are you? And I thought he meant, you know, like, who am I in the show? So I said, Jobina Bruce. And he said, well, it's so nice to meet you, Jobina Bruce. And, and then it dawned on me, no, 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 he was asking my name. So then, oh, I'm sorry, I'm Jeannie Bruce. So then he was like, Jeannie, I, Jeannie Bruce? I thought, so there was this whole little, you know, craziness. And then finally he said, my name is Jean Bruce Scott. I'm playing Jobina Bruce. And I, if I remember, I couldn't find the original script or the sides. But I don't, I don't remember her name actually being Jobina Bruce. I, I thought it was just Jobina, and I didn't know the last name. So I don't know where the Bruce came in. Okay, okay. I, and I, I, maybe one of your detectives can figure, find that out, or if I, yeah, if yeah, I just... Yeah, the, 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 that's probably some kind of, uh, yeah, record, uh, and, and an early script uh, saying, uh, saying something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe just because my name was was Jean Bruce and they called me Jeannie Bruce, maybe that was an omen to them, and that's why they cast me. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> yeah. so, so, so anyway, uh, that was meeting Edward was was fun and wonderful, and uh, I tried to stay out of the way as much as possible because I I uh, I, I knew enough by then, having worked on a, a couple of other shows and and the soap, that people don't like audiences you know don't don't like strangers watching uh, shots and things like that um and then as i said uh, patricia and i had been uh around the same group of young actors in hollywood so we were at uh, barbecues and parties house parties and things together and david and i had been uh in and out of a lot of soap opera events so i didn't feel um i uh I was not nervous going onto the set at, at all. I, I felt like I, I belonged there. And, and a lot of that has to do with Magnum PI and Don Belisario and, yeah. you know, work, Tom Selleck working on those shows. Um, I just felt like, you know, this is my job. I'm, I'm an actor. This is my job. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's wonderful. Um, um, the, if, if you uh, can talk a bit about how uh, it, 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 was Night Rider different than, than other shows you were on? Um, um, you know, the, the, the mood, positive, negative. Uh, how was it being, uh, being, being there for just one week uh, through, 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 uh, through a long season? Um, you know, I... I... It was very pleasant, and I remember the, the the costume designer and the hair and makeup people were wonderful um, and very sweet to me. Um, I didn't. I wore my hair up a lot back in those days, and um, the hair. I remember the 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 person doing hair wanted to make my hair curly. Um, so you'll you'll will see remarks about that um, on the on the Chamber uh, Scott. Uh, archive page. Yeah. Um, but I, I just thought, you know, th this is her character as well. You know, she's helping to build this character. She knows who, this is, you know, a girl from a small town. Yeah. And um, even in life, you know, in my experience, girls from the country or from small towns um, take a lot more care with their hair and their makeup. And, you know, uh, so that it made sense to me. Yeah. Um, and I had beautiful clothes. I loved all the clothes that they gave me to wear. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was like, yeah, let's, sure, let's curl my hair. Little did I know, um, you know, curling the hair meant all day touching up the hair. Yeah. But my hair is pretty straight. My The, the natural uh, texture of my hair is very straight. And so to keep that curly throughout the show, she was putting hot rollers in it. You know, right. anytime yeah. I came yeah. off the set, yeah. you know, more hot rollers in it. You know, it, it just, it moved with me. That's just a great big bubble of hair. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was, uh, it was part of the character. Yeah. 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 Okay. We got, uh, we go to another scene here um, at the Alpine Crest Hotel. Um, uh, Michael is just arriving and, uh, yeah, checking in. Uh, or David Hasselhoff is just arriving. And, uh, and you're also there. You're enjoying, a, uh, I think, a beer, both of you. Um, 
um, was do you do you remember if this was on a, on a stage or was it uh, was it on location? I think that this was on. I we we went out to a hotel in Covina. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. A lot, and I, a lot of it is, is is shot in Covina. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I knew Covina because I had cousins who actually who lived in Covina. So um, uh, it wasn't a. Uh, it, I think it was technically outside of the area that they could or couldn't shoot on location. So if if it's in a certain amount of miles from the studio, you can go out and do it all in one day. But I think we had. I think we had to stay at this hotel. I don't, I don't know for sure, but I, I we, we shot a couple of days because we shot, um, we shot this scene. Um, I think there's a hotel room scene. We shot yeah. that actually in yeah. a hotel room yeah. Yeah. and, uh, and then uh, exteriors. Um, so when we were out driving uh, yeah. in the countryside yeah. and all of that, yeah. that, I think that was all out in the same area. So that's, that's, I think that's an actual uh, hotel. Okay. Restaurant. Yeah, yeah, it it it, it, uh, it makes sense. Um, how did you? Um, how did you? Uh, how much could you talk with with the other actors? Uh, with the other, you know, you know, not regular cast. Um, did did you uh, did you talk to them? You know, we've got we've got the yeah we've got the sheriff here uh, played by John Crawford, and we've got the and we've got the Ron Austin played by uh, played by by Luke Askew as well. Um, uh, do you remember these guys? Did you have t time to talk to uh, to them as well? Uh, how, how does that work when when you're uh, when you're shooting an, an episode like this? Yeah, it depends on where you're shooting that particular day. So if we were shooting um, on the lot, then when we broke for lunch, when when everybody broke for lunch, we'd go to the Universal Commissary, um, which was a cafeteria kind of restaurant. Um, there were two sides to it. There was a, a restaurant side and a cafeteria side. And so um, I probably would have eaten lunch uh, 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 if, if Patricia was there, if we were both on set all day, if she didn't leave right after that scene, uh, we probably would have had lunch in the commissary. Um, and then out on location, they set up a whole catering service. And so they would set up tables and chairs, and if it was too hot, sometimes they put up uh, kind of a over tent yeah, thing so yeah, that you're yeah. not dying in the heat. Yeah. And then pretty much everybody eats there except for the big stars on the show. And a lot of times they had uh, um, motorhomes, yeah. and so they might grab their lunch and go to their motorhome, or they might not eat whatever the caterer is making. Um, or the caterer might make something special for them. Um, so it, 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 it all varies. But so when I was out on location, um, I do remember this actor. Um, we we uh, spent some time together to uh, run lines. He, he wanted to run lines and I thought that was great. I, I always loved to run lines. Yeah. And we probably all were eating at uh, long tables. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, Eric Serva, um, is his name, um, and, and I think th this might be the hotel scene, uh, the, hotel, the yes. hotel room scene that, I, that you talked about previously. Um, yes, I'm just noticing my hands in there. I, I think I'm doing, I, I have never, I, do, I talk with my hands, I just saw <laughs> in there. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, that would have been in the hotel on location. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. So. You know, I did a lot of uh, episodic television, so trying to remember which hotels, <laughs> you know. It's, 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 it's 40 years ago, almost 40 years ago, so, so it's perfectly understandable that, that it's not everything that's crystal clear. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, do you remember now, um, do, you, do you remember if there was any, uh, any post-shooting um, po post, uh, work, dubbing or, or something like that? Um, you know, that, 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 you had, that, that you had to go to a studio and, and re-talk your lines or anything like that? No, we may have, have had to, often you had to, you know, we had to loop 
lines or dub lines yeah, that yeah. were done in cars or on busy streets. Yeah. Um, but I, not many of my scenes were like that. Um, the scenes where I was with Michael in the car, uh, they had a side camera mount. Yeah. So um, I'm trying to think. I, I don't remember. I don't remember going into to, to dub any of these lines. Oh, okay. um, I I I think we're going to come up to it, but yeah, keep going because I have something else I want to tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to talk a lot about Kit uh, just 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 uh, in 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 some in some minutes because we're we're coming now in in, in not uh, that 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 long time we 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 get to a scene uh, in uh, in in at the Alpine Crest Tribune uh, where you work as a journalist, and I've always wanted to know. You know, I, I'm just an ordinary guy. Uh, I've always wanted to know. Um, uh, you're standing in the back, and you are uh, you're, you're pretending to talk. Uh, and, and I think, as, as I recall, you also have a, uh, the talking on on uh, on the phone at a at a at a, at a, uh, yeah, at a certain point. How does that work? If, if you're if you're in the background and you and you're not really to be heard, uh, are you just uh, uh, talking about nothing? I am. Uh, uh, it's just your 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 your, your lips moving. How does that work? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I always make up a conversation. Yeah. So I would have a person that I knew. I was my my character would be talking to. Yeah. Um, that made sense for the show. And I would be actually, I would have that conversation. And I, I imagine what the other person was saying to me in between whatever I was saying. Yeah. Now, if you can't hear me, then I would, I would not anything. I would just be talking by myself. Do you understand that? Yeah, yeah, so I said yeah. I would not vocalize anything. I would be just be talking to myself. So that's what I just said, but without talking yeah. and that's to help the sound man you know i don't want to be that actor in the back that's drawing attention um <laughs> so unless it's unless it was scripted that somebody was supposed to overhear something on the on the conversation i i would usually create that conversation yeah, yeah. okay yes, so we can see uh, yeah michael is getting out here and he's, uh, he's preparing to uh to enter uh, your your working place, I think, um, and then yeah. Uh, also here we get a we get a we get to meet uh, Martha Haverstraw, uh, Amsi Strickland. I don't know if you have any uh, any uh, memories regarding regarding her. She's coming up talking to to to. I do. She was here. darling. Oh, she was the sweetest woman. Um, uh, we actually again between. Um, getting coffee or sitting waiting to do your shots or, you know, all, all, having lunch, whatever those things are, you, you have a chance to have conversations with people. And she was just, she was just delightful. Um, I, I do remember her saying that the little house uh, was very much like her house. And, and the, the reason that I remember is because my little house was very much like her little house in the show. Okay. So those little bungalows, yeah. uh, which were built in the 1950s uh, in Burbank and uh, that area, um, they they all looked pretty much the same. They were it's the, <laughs> the same kind of little house. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So she also had a had a, a great uh, career. She uh, she died in 2006 and and was acting uh, up until 2001. Started her career back in. 1937 so uh, so really a long and an impressive career so uh, yes yeah yeah okay so so n n now we're, we're getting to the point in in the in the show i think where, where we um um where we uh, uh are, are, are hitting hitting some action points i don't know if you remember were you present when any of this you know you know kit, kit has kind of a, a legendary turbo boost uh through an alley uh, just in a, in a few minutes, uh, were, were you present when they did all that? If I was, I was not right on the set. No, no. Um, we, th that's, this is all of this stuff that they shot, including that alley, 
was when we were out on location. Yeah, yeah. And so um, any of the stunt work, um, I would, I, I personally, and probably the 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 AD would not want extraneous people uh, in or around the set. Um, but we we uh, I know that we were out there both with with first unit and second unit was shooting I think at the same time, yeah, yeah. Um, and so some of the that that stunt was probably uh, second unit. Yeah. Um, uh, so, you know, we, we would also be in different locations shooting at that same time. Yeah. So I think the short answer is no. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So we, we, we're coming up now in a few seconds to your first scene with Kit. Um, um, have, have you any, uh, any memories regarding uh, the car and, and the different cars? Because there, there must have been some, some different cars. Um, I, I don't know how many different cars you were in, but... But but uh, uh, yeah, uh, one one is probably the hero car uh, with with a big uh, flashy dash, and 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 uh, there have probably been some stunt cars as well. I don't know how 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 much you you can remember from from uh, from this. You know, I I don't know enough about the different cars that they used to to speak uh, really to that. Um, I knew the car. I knew Kit was a magical car, and um, yeah, again, you know, all of these uh, these are all different cars that you're just we're, we're watching right yeah, now. I yeah. know that, um, but the car that they had Michael uh, David and I in um, that had the camera mount on it. Yeah, I think that the dash was live on that. Is that possible? Yeah, um, I can't remember if it, 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 it could be it, it could be uh, for, 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 for some scenes uh, that, 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 that it had it had the, the hero dash with all the with all the electronics in, in, in the yeah. camera with, with all the cameras as well yeah yeah I don't know also um, uh, Gil uh, showed me the car and showed me some of the stuff that was inside you know so he must have showed me a car that had a dashboard that worked yeah yeah um, and then I, you know, I also had watched the show, so I, I knew, okay. I, I knew who Kit was, uh, and, and Kit's character. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I was only in the car, I think, in this, it maybe once. Okay. Is that right? Yeah, or was yeah, I in the yeah. car? No, no, it, 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 I think it's, it's, uh, it's about right. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you have a, a scene where, where what we see on screen is you driving in the car with David Hasselhoff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so that that is probably correct. And 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 as as I understand you, you, you your memories tell you that, that that this was actually a car with with a good dash. It wasn't just a a, no, a normal car with a round steering wheel and and and, uh, and and a normal dashboard. No, I think I think it was the all the bells and whistles. Yeah. 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 Okay. I don't know. I, I I if we looked at it more closely. Um, if we, yeah, I don't know if we can see from the shot or not. Yeah, it's, it, it, it is it is difficult to see. Uh, I would say also because because when 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 the cameras are, are mounted, we don't we don't get to see the dash at the same point, and and we know that that they were switching cars all the time. We know, uh, and and yeah. historians uh, Joe Huth especially is is very good at at uh, at pointing this out when he when when he walks through uh, many of the the episodes. It's quite clear that that that, that the car is. Uh, 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 that is in in or, or, sorry that they'll be using two three or maybe even four cars in in the same scene. Yeah. 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 So uh, so so a lot of uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, work uh, uh, being done there by, by by the stunt crew. Yeah. Yeah, I think I I mean for some reason I, I I knew that there was more than one car because I think they had more than one car out yeah. with us in Covina. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I think there was. I, I, yeah. know, I know Joe Huth can 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 um, can answer in very precisely how many cars was was used in this. I I, I would say four or five cars, um, uh -huh. but 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 uh, but, but uh, I think Joe, Joe will have a, a more more precise answer. Um, maybe six. I, and as as I remember it, that was about what they had uh, at at that point. Uh, they they would get more cars. Uh, in, uh, in 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 future episodes, um, 
So, uh, so, so now, now, now in, in, in the episode, we've got Kit being, uh, yeah, being uh, caught, or, or what one oh, should say. Right. Um, and and that, that also brings you into, into play uh, in, in a little bit um, when, when you go to, uh, to the warehouse uh, and, and uh, have to talk to, uh, to Kit and, and help, him, help him get down. Um, uh, can you remember anything? You, 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 you just, just told me a, a funny story uh, about you also meeting up with uh, William Daniels. Yes, yes. So this we I'm pretty sure we shot this on the Universal lot, and I do remember there there the the lighting, getting the lighting right was was difficult and critical on this the way that, that they were working and um, I all I knew is that I needed to go in and and talk to Kit like a, a, like someone that I needed help from and that Kit was not a car Kit was a, a being you know a, a sentient being and so um, uh, Gil and I had had some fun talking about how to do this and what I was what I was going to do and um, when I shot it, besides the lights in the front, I think the lights go on at some point, um, yeah. the script supervisor was reading the lines. So I didn't hear Bill Daniels, um, Kit, I didn't hear Kit. Um, and so uh, I, you know, I, I had to imagine what Kit sounded like. Um, and then years later, when I met Bill Daniels, because Bill and I, Bill was on St. Elsewhere, and I was a recurring guest star on St. Elsewhere for a year, and we talked about Knight Rider, and he said, up until that point, he thinks that I was the only person who ever actually had a conversation with Kit. Besides the crew, the regular, you know, yeah, I think, uh, I think it's it's uh, it's it's uh, it's probably correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, that was pretty exciting that I I got to be one of the few people who ever got to talk to Kit. So yeah. that that was pretty exciting. <laughs> and he said he didn't hear my voice. I think until he looped it. No, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when he went in, he got to answer, you know, I was acting my heart out <laughs> in an empty uh, warehouse with the script supervisor. And then he uh, used my voice and what I was doing to, to respond as Kit. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. yeah and he a is a delightful man, by the way. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Is, is he passed? I don't know. No, 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 he isn't. He isn't actually. I'm, I'm trying to to uh, to get a similar interview going with uh, with him at the moment. Um, oh, I it, hope you did it. He, he's such a wonderful man. Just a very, very sweet man. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. Um, good. Okay. So uh, yeah, we, we we still have we still have kid up here. Um, uh, they're just hanging. <laughs> Oh, I did hope something that I noticed when I was watching this episode, and I, I don't know that it's been asked for. It probably has. So I I saw the the uh, Knight Rider historians uh, show uh, the breakdown uh, yeah. about some of the cars. Yeah. And um, the the explanation about Michael's clothing, I always yeah. wondered why he was sneaking around wearing a bright red turtleneck yeah, and yeah. red boots and all things, you know. Yeah. Um, but at, at the end of that scene, when I get Kit, Kit out, you know, when I get him down, yeah. I have to go over and actually move the leather uh, lever to get him down. But how does the door get open? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those things. Kit, Kit, has Hollywood a, magic. Yeah, Kit has an amazing ability to get, uh, to get doors to open and, and things like that. So, uh, yeah, yeah. And it's a magic car. <laughs> it's a magic car. Very magic. Yeah, it is. And then, it is. And then I know uh, that they then use the scene where they break uh, David out. Yeah. That was from the pilot. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, this 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 episode, I I, can, I I think I have time to just 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 a, a tiny anecdote because this episode is also is also very special to me. Um, this episode 
uh, was on Danish television back in 1986. And uh, at that point, uh, you know, the, the, the show had been cancelled in, in the US and, and Danish national television, the only television channel that, that, that I could watch uh, where I lived in Denmark, um, uh, chose to, uh, to, to, uh, to buy 12 uh, episodes, only 12 episodes, and this was one of them. And, uh, and, and uh, my brother, he got half of the episodes on his uh, uh, VCR uh, tapes, uh, VHS tapes, and, and I got the other half. Um, and on, on the day that, that this episode, it aired in, uh, in, in Denmark back in 1986, uh, we, were, uh, we were visiting uh, our grandparents. So we had, we had, uh, we had set the, the, the VCR at home on the timer to, to, to record this episode, as we did with all the episodes. But when we got home, it hadn't recorded. So, so, so to, we, uh, we watched the episode uh, at our grandparents, but to me this has all, always been the lost episode, because I, I know all the other 11 episode that, episodes that I was in the Danish television. I was, I was 10 years old in, in 1986. Um, I know all of them forwards and backwards. Um, uh, but this one, um, yeah, it was the missing episode for many years, but, but the 1993 or 94, uh, all 84 episodes uh, came on, on, on Danish TV3, another uh, uh, channel that, that had, uh, that, that had uh, yeah, surfaced at that point in time, and, uh, and I got to see it then. <laughs> Boy, that was a long wait. Yeah, yeah, it was. Especially for a ten-year-old. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Actually, I saw it earlier, but then it was German dubbed from I think '89 or so. Uh, I had friends in my uh, in my school that, that were able to, to watch Night Rider on a German uh, on German television channel, um, and and I went to them every Tuesday when I was uh, done playing soccer, and and was sure that that they got uh, this night's episode recorded so that I could take it home on a VHS tape. And watch it uh, again and again. So, so oh, I've, I've seen a lot of the Night Rider episodes, uh, German dub as well. So, uh, I think enough about me. Enough about my <laughs> my uh, yeah. Special, I think that's wonderful. And episodes. I love. I actually love hearing that you were ten years old and that you know the show captured your imagination and uh, you know that it was the thing that you you wanted to, to to see and watch over and over again and and here you are now with your own kit car yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and and, and don't forget uh, living the dream by interviewing uh, the stars oh. of, of my favorite yes. show yeah. um, so so yeah it's uh, it's amazing I'm uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm honored and I'm, I'm so pleased that, that we can do this and, and, and that you think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a good thing and, and, and want to do this. Uh, because it brings, Absolutely. already we've got a lot of background stories that, that uh, you know, that, that this was before the time you did behind the scenes. This was before the time that, that, that uh, uh, we got all the commentaries that, uh, that we get on, on Blu-ray and DVD uh, movies today. So um, yeah, so 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 we uh, and we not rather fans. We we really crave for 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 stories um, of how how was it back in the eighties being being on the show and, and that is what we absolutely say, uh, like and, and look at all of the different things. I'm sure that young people were inspired to do because they were in. The, these writers' imaginations, yeah. but then they executed them so beautifully, yeah. you know, on screen yeah. that they they then captured all of you, and you were like, well, why don't we have a car that talks? Well, why, you know? And now everything talks to us, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, and we can program everything. My car drives itself, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> it's it's pretty cool. It, it has come you through. guys. You're the ones who invented it all. Yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, yeah. it's amazing. <laughs> so uh, yeah, now, now I think you, you you're being uh, in, if if we turn back to uh, to, uh, to to the episode now now we've got the sheriff and he's uh, he's not very he's not very happy um, and uh, yeah you, uh, he tries to uh, to to get the better of you there but but uh, but he doesn't succeed. You're a uh, you you are uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Journalist with uh, yeah in Danish we say we say with with legs in your nose. Um, 
And I, I, don't, I don't think, uh, oh, we're, we're bones in your nose, sorry, no, not legs, we're bones in your nose. And, and that, that really means that, that you're, a, uh, you're a person that, that, that goes for what you want and you know what's right and, and no one should tell you otherwise. So, uh, yeah. That's what I liked about the character. Yeah. You know, um, she, she, was, she was well imagined. Yeah. Yeah. And, and very nicely written. I, I, I was I was happy for all of the all of the scenes. Yeah, and also also, also was a, a strong a strong lady actually. Um, uh, even coming from from, from a small town, uh, she uh, she knows what she wants. And and uh, also I think we, we get to, we get to see it a bit later uh, when when uh, when Michael wants to take off by himself and, and c c catch the bad guys. You you get in the car. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm I'm going with you. So uh, that's yeah. right. That's right. So uh, so um, if if we come come ju just a bit back to to, uh, to 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 some of the cars, I, I don't know how much you remember. Uh, do you remember if if there were any special rules regarding uh, who uh, who from from this from, uh, from from the show could get in uh, to 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 the to the hero car, the the, the finest of the cars with 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 the, with the dash. Uh, anything like that? I, mean, I don't know the um, the written or or stated protocols uh, that they would have had on the show. However, um, having worked with another uh, highly um, specialized um, piece of equipment on Airwolf, um, you don't you, people do not touch or get in or or drive those cars uh, unless they are authorized to do so. And so, even as you know, as an actor, you know, God forbid, you know, I, I would never do it just because I, you know, I know I know a little bit, or I knew a little bit by then. But if some kind of, you know, somebody accidentally said, "Oh, I just, I'm so tired, I just need to sit down. I'm going to sit in this car," there would have been hell to pay. Yeah. 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 No, I. They. They. People were kept. You had to have the authority to get in the car, touch the car, you know. Obviously, you know, if, if, uh, if David had decided to take a nap in one of the cars, I guess that, that he would have gotten away with it, yeah. but nobody else. <laughs> nobody else. <laughs> you just see him back there taking his nap. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, uh, that's very good. And now we've got Kit uh, and, and Martha out on, on the streets um, uh, trying to... Uh, red turtleneck. Yeah, we've got the red turtleneck as well. I'm hiding, but I'm in this red turtleneck. Yeah, <laughs> it's very good. It's very good. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, uh, any other memories from from uh, from acting with David Hasselhoff? Um, uh, you you, oh. you you uh, you you said that that you you, you had also watched Night Rider prior to to being on the show. Uh, was it also what you could say hit show that that you were cast to to uh, to act in? Yeah, I mean, I I, I just think that we had an uh, we had an awareness of each other, um, probably at the time, and so I I just felt very comfortable uh, with him, and I'm I'm sure that we, you know, we we probably talked a little bit about the show or what the next setup was going to be or whatever, but. We were probably talking more about, you know, what we were going to do on the weekend and, you know, house projects. And, yeah. you know, in, in those days, even David, you know, um, I don't know how to explain this. Uh, television actors at that particular time, unless you were, um, you know, I, I can't even think of who, like the, George Papard. Um, Edward Moliere, um, you know, in the first year of doing a series, um, you're you're making good money and and you're making probably more money than you've ever made. But we all had really good people around us, and, and you know, David would have had wonderful uh, managers and agents and you know people around him, and they're all saying, "Don't spend your money," you know, "Stay in the house you're in. Don't move to Beverly Hills." Right, you know, fix up this little house. It's just you know, st stay there. So that's what that's what I remember all of us doing. I mean, you know, I had I had friends, myself soon to be included in that group, but we all had series, yeah. you know, 
and um, people, I, I don't think, I, I don't think there need, needed to be that all of that flash no. back back then. There seems to be a lot more flash these days. So we have this scene here where, where you are, uh, yeah, where you are uh, uh, spying uh, on, on the two bad guys. Uh, do you remember doing that? Because uh, w w when I see it, it, it I, I get the idea that, that you're not even near them. You're probably doing it at a, a different time and place. Um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, I'm sorry that I didn't convince you. I was I was nearer to them. <laughs> no, no. But, but, but that was you, you know, when when I watch the episode, I, I watch it to to to, uh, to to try to identify some of the some of the small smaller flaws because they, they make it more interesting talking to you, of course. But but uh, is, is is someone standing there saying saying the lines of the two guys so that you know what to act to? No, on that particular stuff. Um, because I, I'm pretty sure I just, they shot it just wild with me, with me yeah, yeah. after these guys were gone. Yeah. Um, I think it was just Gil saying to you, okay, now they're talking about the blah, 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 you know, and I knew where we were in the script. Yeah. And then on, on this part, he was like saying, okay, they're, they're driving away. Okay. They're gone now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so um, I think Gil talked to me through those. I think the director talked yeah. me through those. So we're coming on to, to, uh, to, to a scene now where I, th I think it's you in the scene and I think it's Kit coming in also j j just in, a, in, in 30 seconds or so doing a, a 180 spin around uh, right in front of you and, and David Hasselhoff. I don't know if you remember that. Um, see, it's, it's, it's coming now. It, it, it looks as if it's you. Uh, yeah, that does look like us. I'm surprised. I wouldn't have put David there. <laughs> I would have put the guest star there, but I wouldn't have put David there. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that that does look like us. Yeah. Um, you, 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 you haven't got a, a specific memory regarding this this car turning around right right in front of you. No, no, and I got to I got to say, you know, um, these stunt drivers are so good. Yeah, yeah. Um, even if they had said to David and I, okay, they're going to come pretty close to you or whatever. You know, we would have just said, okay, yeah, we trust them. Yeah. You know, um, they probably they probably did it two or three times um, before they brought us in for the shot yeah. as well. So we could see, you know, this guy, he, he turns it on a dime. It's it's there. There's, yeah. there's there, you know, although I, I, I as a, the producer in me now <laughs> says, yeah. I think I would have put my star there. So, yeah. Of that, that, again, the guest star. Okay. Yeah. Well, no. I'm just kidding. Uh, obviously, I'm just kidding. But um, yeah, I, I don't know that I would have. Uh, uh, yeah. If if I had done it, if I was doing it, I might have put my the stunt doubles there. Okay. But I didn't have it. You know, I, there was no reason for me to have a stunt double, so I didn't have a double on this. Okay. Okay. Um, now, a scene where where you're in the car. Um, when when you did the scenes. Uh, where you were talking uh, in the car, uh, I, I expect that, that that the car was was probably being towed. Yeah, I think I do remember being towed. Yeah, 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 and yeah, and, um, yeah, and, and uh, you you were yeah concentrating on your acting. Uh, um, can you talk a bit about how it was getting into a car with all these cameras mounted around? I think we got in the car first and then they mounted them. Okay, yeah, yeah. Now, I, I'm not saying that because I remember exactly on this particular show, but I do remember on, uh, uh, I did a, a, a Magnum in a car yeah, yeah. and I was supposed to be driving and I actually did drive that car. Okay, okay. With, with the camera mount. Yeah. Um, but we, I, I'm pretty sure I got in, I'm pretty sure I got in before they mounted the camera. I don't know how we could get in otherwise. No, no, it's it's probably correct. I, I, I don't know about about, yeah. about how, how they how they do these these camera mounts, um, but of course it makes sense to 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 tow the car so that that the driver uh, is uh, yeah, can concentrate on acting and not on, uh, and yes. not on driving. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. 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 No, I was a wreck. I had I had Tom Selleck in the passenger seat. I was on a very narrow dock, and I had uh, oh. Uh, pulleys and cars coming out of warehouses in front of me, um, and I I drove. 
And again, looking back on it now, I, that doesn't, I wouldn't have done that. Um, but I wasn't, I also wasn't going very fast. If you watch the episode where we're, we're meant to be going slow, but yeah, I was scared. I was really nervous that particular day. Not on this, not on the show. The show was, and yeah. Did, this was, uh, did you see any, any of all the action that, that we see in this? Were, were you in any way involved with that? Or, or was it just, you just got into the car with, uh, with David and you drove and you, and you did the lines? Um, and, pretty and much, pretty much. This is all editing magic. Yeah. This is this is second unit. Yeah. Um, these are all stunt people, and they fixed it in post. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. I know that it would be more exciting if we were in all of it, but. Oh, of, um, of, course, of course, of course, but it's it's you know it's it's story like this that that, that makes it uh, yeah um, that, that that brings out. A bit of, of the fantastic Hollywood and gives gives uh, normal people an idea of, of the, the the giant uh, wheels that, that are in motion in order to to, to, to make this look good because yes. you know, what's really happening is is very much different and, and yeah than, than actually what we see. Yeah. yeah, and in fact, you know, even you know, I think there are things uh, that we shot that didn't end up in the episode. Okay, okay. Um, you know, little bits and pieces of things. Yeah. But again, that's that's the the, the beauty of, of editors yeah. and what they do and how amazing they are. Yeah. Um, it's, 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 it's really stunning yeah. what they can do. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so we're, coming, we're coming to an end now. Um, Patricia and Edward and... Uh, uh, David uh, uh, talking with Kit, and I think I think that this episode ends up with with uh, Michael, uh, yeah, Michael Knight sitting down and having to to at least begin to read the Bible to uh, to Kit. Um, that he's, he's he's got his work cut out for him there. So um, so I don't know if you have any any last uh, recollections or memories from from doing this this episode that that that, that you want to. Uh, to to, uh, to 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 bring. No, it, it did occur to me uh, when I rewatched it. Um, I'm still in contact uh, with a couple of that gang of actors that kind of hung out together, and uh, I thought, you know, I'm going to reach out and see if I can find Patricia, mm -hmm. and uh, see where where she is these days. Because yeah. um, it's it's always interesting to 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 hear what people did you know, after our quote unquote, you know, Hollywood days. Yeah, yeah. I think she, she's uh, an environmental activist, um, uh, something with, uh, with uh, yeah, uh, contaminated water and things like that. Uh, wow, she's, uh, that's, that's, that's fantastic. She, yeah, she's, she's fighting, so yeah. So, so, so uh, I think she, she's, uh, yeah, gone in, gone in that direction. So, uh, well, if you talk to her, just tell her Jeannie Bruce, Scott says hello. Oh, <laughs> she, oh, um, she, was, she was friends with a, 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 actually a good friend of mine, Christy Kellogg, um, who was also on the Universal lot at that time and, and working, uh, yeah. and Jack Coleman. Jack was, uh, played Stephen in Dynasty. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I saw, I, saw, I saw a picture of, of you and him on... Uh, yes. Yeah, and, and I, I just don't... Because I, I saw him on Dynasty as well, and, and I haven't been more than... Five six years. I, I remember my, my, my parents reading reading uh, the, the, the the subtitles. Um, uh, and Dynasty was was yeah uh, an important part of, of Sunday television in Denmark at that time. We remember we only had yeah. one channel. Um, so and I remember him from Dynasty, but but I, I couldn't remember you. And that that's because you, you weren't on Dynasty with him. You played with you you acted with him. No 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 no, no. I was on yeah I was on Magnum when he was on Dynasty. Yeah um, yeah. Yeah, but we're still good friends. So, yeah, it's, I it's awesome. just wonder, I, you know, it's like, oh, gosh, I haven't talked to this person in 10 years. You know, do I dare try an old number and, you know, figure out what, what they're doing with their lives? Yeah. But, yeah. you know, uh, the whole pandemic and all of that has made, ha I have reached out. I just made a trip uh, to Texas yeah. uh, to go and see Alex Cord, um, yeah. who it, it was uh, Archangel on Airwolf. 
So, you know, you can't just pick up the phone. No. It's, 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 yeah, yeah. Look at what we're doing here. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Jean Bruce Scott, it's been fantastic meeting you, getting to talk to you, uh, and not least getting you to talk about your life and not least uh, your, your week uh, as Jobina Bruce on, uh, on Night Rider. Um, it's I'll, great talking to you, Jacob. Yeah, it's it just was, it's wonderful. It was fantastic having you here. So um, thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks.